Hey everyone, it's Tyler Binkley here, and we are looking at defining smarter functions in the uh, Swift Playground in the specific chapter called Conditional Code and in the Learn to Code 1 Playground. So if you are just joining me for the first time, it'd be very helpful for you to take a look at some of my other videos, especially on some of the earlier sections of this chapter, Conditional Code if you've never seen what conditional code is or is all about. So, you know, and if you do know what conditional code is, but you're just stuck on this one, well, check it out. And I hope this video can help you to understand this a little bit more. And so, you know, when we look at the map, let's see, it looks like there's uh, a couple of rows and it like zigzags around until it gets to that last gem at the very end. But I'm assuming that since this is conditional code, we don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that these rows are going to be random. And yep, if I hit run my code right now, you can see the white framework that just randomizes everything. So all of those spots are going to be randomized. Okay. And it says goal. Our goal is to use a function, a loop, and a condition to collect gems or activate switches. In this puzzle, every other forward movement might lead to a gem, a switch, or nothing at all. Every other forward movement. Okay, so I think they're trying to indicate that, you know, it's like uh, the tile right in front of Byte right now is empty, but the next one has something. And then the next one's empty, and then the next one has something. So it's like every other, right? When you run the puzzle, the wireframes show the locations where items might appear. To solve the puzzle, you could write lots of if statements, but there's a better way. Start by breaking the puzzle into its basic patterns. There are three major paths, each with two possible gem or switch locations. Using an if statement, define the collect or toggle function to check the contents of a tile. And so right now they're saying, okay, we made this function. Remember functions, if you remember functions from back in the uh, chapter that was called functions, you can create functions and call them whatever you want. So they, they specifically called this collect or toggle. And I think their game plan or their idea is that we're either going to be collecting a gem or we're going to be toggling a switch. And for that, that means we need to do an if else statement, right? I mean, we learned about that in one of the previous sections. So we don't know if it's going to be a gem or a switch. So that's why we want to tap on the word if add an else if statement, okay? Make sure you tapped directly on the word if to allow that option to show up. And here's where we have the, the go to condition with code or else condition and code. And this is where we're gonna say, okay, hey, if it's on a gem, right? I'm gonna start with that one because the, the function is specifically called collect or toggle. Well, we collect gems. So if it's on a gem, make sure you're on the blue, make sure the box turns blue, we collect it. However, if it's on a closed switch, right? We only care about closed switches. Then we always want to toggle it. So I need to find that toggle switch. And so now we have our if else statement where we're saying, okay, if it's this, do this. If it's on a gem, collect it. Or if it's on a closed switch, toggle it. We're setting up kind of like that double condition, all right, where it's going to check both of those to see what happens. And now what's cool about functions is, you know, I can call this down below. You know, when I tap, so this is my official box for actually coding, all right? A function is just something that can be called in your line of code. And that's where it shows up at the bottom now, collect or toggle. You know, I could have renamed it something else um, and that would have been fine and it would show up on the bottom. That's, that's the nice thing about functions, okay? So right here, you know, I, I have the collect or toggle taken care of. So now, you know, my next thought is, hang on a second. So there's, there's three main rows, right? Like I got this first row and then I have that middle row and then we have the last row. And each row, they're, the e they're, they're equal in length, right? They're equal in tile length. And like it's set up in the directions, it's going to be every other tile that has something. So, you know, my, my first initial thought is, okay, why don't we set up another function, okay, down below in this box, 
Okay. And you know, now when you need, when you get a function, when you start a function, um, here, let me just go back for a second. So when I do a function, I'm hitting the, the function button at the, with the commands. Okay. And I can name it whatever I want. And so maybe we, we call this row or, you know, like, I don't know, maybe since it's every other that, you know, there's kind of like four tiles where, where it completes a row in front of us a little bit. So, you know, I might just call it row or you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to say row. And in that row, like we learned on the, the last section, okay, and some of these other sections that we had just worked on, why don't I make a loop, okay? Because a loop, which is the option of four, the F-O-R at the bottom, okay? And uh, a loop that if I'm trying to make this complete a row, well, like I said, there's four tiles, at least, you know, four tiles in front of the, in front of byte to finish out a row. So I'm going to just do four for now. I might have to change that later, but that's okay. So if we go with four, and then what do I want to do in that row to complete the row? You know, even though it's every other tile, like maybe I, I do move forward and then collect or toggle and I call the function from up, or up, up above, or I could just say collect or toggle and it's going to check every single, um, you know, that would basically have it check everything, right? Like it's going to move forward. It's going to check to collect or toggle and uh to see what's there which is kind of cool so um row might be might be helpful here and you know maybe oops I, I should add the move forward in here too so if i'm trying to complete the row and i want it to loop i'm going to say move forward and then collect or toggle so now in my row it's going to move forward it's going to check to see if there's a, a gem or a switch because i'm, I'm using this function that's up above in my function that I called row, which is totally cool that you can do that. And now I think I'm ready to start. So, so down below, you know, I don't actually have anything coded yet. Like these functions are just defining what, what I can do whenever I say collect or toggle or row in this case. So why don't I just start by saying row, you know, because if now I, I say row, it's going to move forward and then it's going to collect or toggle and it's going to do that four times because I set the number to a four on my loop. So let's just see what happens here. If I run through my, if I step through my code, okay, row, well, it does move forward. It's going to say collect or toggle. Okay. It notices, all oh, right, well, there's really nothing there. So it just skips it. Okay. Now it's going to say, oh, all right, there is something here. It happens to be a closed switch, so I'm going to toggle that. All right, it's going back to row because I looped it four times. Let's see what happens here. And so, you know, we added some functions and some loops here. And now I just finished that row. And, you know, he's all bummed, but it's just because we aren't done yet. So now what do I do next? Well, after I finish that row, I got to get to the next row. And there, it doesn't look like there's anything random in between. So I need to just turn left, which will face the next you know, set of stairs. And then I'm going to move forward two times, which should get me to the corner. Now, if I run this really fast, you know, that's just going to get me to the corner. I still need to face to the left. I want to turn left so I'm facing the next row. And now I, I should be able to just say row. And I'm going to run it really fast to see if that works. Because row is going to do exactly what I just had it do on the last row. And there we go. And now I just need to, now I'm uh, looking the other direction. So I need to turn to uh, bytes right and move forward. And then I would still have to turn right one more time so that I can be facing the very last row. And, you know, so right now if I run it really fast, that's going to get me all the way to the last row, which as we already figured out, my function that says row is looping four times by moving forward and checking to collect or toggle, which is checking if it's on a gem. So now we just put it all together. We run everything. Okay. And if I quick switch it to step through my code, you'll see, okay, it's moving forward, turning right. It's going to row and it's going to loop this four times, move forward, collect or toggle. 
Okay, it's checking the conditions. Okay, no condition was met, so it repeats the loop. It moves forward. Oh, a condition is met. It was on a closed switch, so it toggles it. Okay, it repeats the loop. It's not going to find anything here because there's nothing there. And last but not least, it's going to go one more time to complete the row. It notices it's on a closed switch and it toggles it. And there we used some functions, a loop right there, and of course, not even that much code because that's the benefit of functions and loops uh, is that we don't have to use a ton of coding to complete these complex maps and puzzles that it's giving us. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and have a great day.